John of Gaunt, time honored Lancaster, hast thou, according to thy open band, brought hither Henry Harrifer, thy bold son, here to make with the boisterous late appeal, which then our leisure would not let us hear, against the Duke of Norfolk, Thomas Mowbray? I have, my Tell me, moreover, hast thou sounded him if he appealed the Duke on ancient malice, or worthily, as a good subject should, on some known ground of treachery in him? As near as I could sift him on that argument, on some apparent danger seen in him aimed at your highness, no inveterate malice. Then call them to our presence. Face to face and frowning brow to brow, ourself will hear the accuser and the accused freely speak. Many years of happy days befall my gracious sovereign, my most loving liege. Each day still better of his happiness, until the heavens and made earth could half add an immortal title to your crown. We thank you both. Yet one what flatters us, as well appeareth by the cause you come, namely, to appeal each other of high treason. Cousin of Hereford, what dost thou object against the Duke of Norfolk, Thomas Mowbray? First, let heaven be a record to my speech. In the devotion of a subject's love, tendering the precious safety of my prince, and free from other misbegotten hate, come I to pillage this princely presence. Now, Thomas Mowbray, do I turn to thee? Thou art a traitor and a miscreant, too good to be so and too bad to live, since the more fair and crystal is the sky, the uglier seem the clouds that in it fly. Once more, the more to aggravate the note, with a foul traitor's name, stop I thy throat, and wish, so please my sovereign, ere I move what my tongue speaks, my right strong sword may be. Let not my cold words here accuse my zeal. Not the trial of a woman's war, the bitter clamor of too eager tongue. Can arbitrate this cause betwixt us twain. The blood is hot that must be cooled for this. Yet can I not of such tame patience boast as to be hushed and not at all to say? First, the fair reverence of your highness curbs me from giving reins and spurs to my free speech, which else would post until it had returned these terms of treason. Don't down his throat! Setting aside this high blood's loyalty and let him be no kinsman to my liege, I do defy him. And I spit at him, call him a slanderous coward and a villain. By all my hopes, most falsely doth he lie. Pale, trembling coward! There I throw my gage, disclaiming here my kindred to the king, and lay aside my high blood's royalty, which fear, not reverence, makes me to accept. If guilty dread hath left me so much strength as to take up my honor's palm, then stoop. By these and all the rights of knight and elf will I make it against thee, arm in arm, what I have spoke or thou canst worse to I take it up, and by that sword I swear, which gently laid my knighthood on my shoulder, I'll answer thee in any fair degree or chivalrous design of knightly trial. When I mount, a lie may I not like if I be traitor or unjustly fight. Cousin, what dost thou object against the Duke of Norfolk? It must be great that can inherit us so much as of a thought of alien. Look, what I speak, my life shall prove it true. That all the treasons for these eighteen years, compounded and plotted in this land, fetched from false no great their first head and spring. Further will I say, and further will maintain upon his bad life to make all this good, that he did plot the Duke of Gloucester's death, suggest his soon believing adversaries, and consequently, like a traitor coward, sluiced of his innocent soul through streams of blood. Blood which, like sacrificing angels, cries even from the tongueless caverns of the earth to me for justice and rough chastisement. And by the glorious worth of my descent, this arm will do it, or this life be spent. How high a pitch his resolution soars. Thomas of Norfolk, what sayst thou to that? Oh, let my sovereign turn away his face, and bid his ears a little while be deaf till I have told this slander of his blood, how God and good men hate so foul a liar. No, but impartial are our eyes and ears. Were he our brother, nay, our kingdom's heir, as he is but our father's brother's son, now by thy scepter's awe I make a vow. Such neighbor nearness to our sacred blood should nothing privilege him, nor partialize the unstooping firmness of my upright soul. He is our subject, Mowbray, so art thou. Free speech and fearless I to thee allow. And Bolingbroke, as lowest to thy heart through the fat, through the false passage of thy throat, thou liest. For Gloucester's death I slew him not, but to my own disgrace neglected my sworn duty in that case. For you, 
my noble lord of Lancaster, the honorable father of my foe, once did I let an ambush for an ambush for your life. A trespass that doth vex my grieved soul. But ere I last received the sacrament, I did confess it, and exactly begged your grace's pardon, and I hope I had it. This is my fault. As for the rest of you, it issues from the rancor of a villain, a recreant, and most degenerate traitor, which in myself I boldly will offend, interchanging the hard man in my gauge, upon this overweening traitor's foot, to prove myself a loyal gentleman even in the best blood chambered in his blood. In this whereof, most heartily I pray your highness to sign our trial. Wrath kindled, gentlemen, be ruled by me. Let's purge this color without letting blood. Forget, forgive, conclude, and be agreed. Good uncle, let this end where it begun. Will come the Duke of Norfolk, you your son. The Amaypeace shall become my age. Throw down, my son, the Duke of Norfolk's gage. And Norfolk, throw down peace. When, Harry, when? Obedience bids I should not bid again. Norfolk, throw down we bid. There is no boot. Myself I throw dread sovereign at my foot. My life thou shalt command, but not my shame. The one my duty owes, but my fair name, despite of death that lives upon my grave, to dog the son of youth thou shalt not have. I am disgraced, impeached, and baffled here. Pierced to the soul with slanders, venom fear, for which no one can cure of his heart blood, which breathe his poison. Rage must be withstood. Give me his gauge. Lions make leopards tame. Yea, but not change his spots. Take but my shame, and I resign my gauge. My dear, dear Lord. Purest treasure mortal times afford is spotless reputation. That away men are but gilded loam and painted clay. Mine honor is my life. Both live in one. Take honor from me, and thy life is done. Then, dear my liege, my honor, let me try. In that I live, and for that will I die. Cousin, throw up your gauge. Do you begin? O oh God, defend my soul from such deep sin. Shall I seem crestfallen in my father's sight, or with pale beggar fear impeach mine height before this out there dastard? Ere my tongue shall make such feeble wrong, or wound my honor with so base a pall, my teeth shall tear the slavish motive of recanting fear, and spit it, bleed it in his high disgrace, even where shame of harbor in no brace face. You were not born to sue, but to command. Which, since we cannot do to make you friends, be ready, as your lives shall answer it. Since we cannot atone you, we shall see justice design the victor's chivalry. 